Hi there, this is Anna Brandt. I wanted to do just a free video on a little tutorial on how I use a photo combined with Midjourney, Photoshop, cleaning things up. This image that you see was done in a photo. So let's look at a before image. It's not exactly the same image because I wanted to edit it again, but just to give you an idea, this is this is what she looks like. She's gorgeous either way. Um, but here's unedited. Here's unedited maternity. Now, a lot of people will say they don't know how to use a photo or they're worried that a photo is over editing. Understand that with a photo, you're in complete control. So to say it's over editing, that's up to you how you want to edit it. Okay. There's two things I can do. I can either use LSP presets uh, that I love, or I can do manual controls. If I just come over here and I go to the LSP presets, I have a bunch of different presets of hers. I love everything she does. I can come in here into the newborn preset and I can pick certain things. I can just do sky polish. I can just do sky end or, you know, lemon sky all or, you know, I can just do an example and just do all and show you by clicking that button how beautiful that edit is. Now, I haven't done the background or anything else. This is just the skin editing. This is just to show you what using LSP presets, just the click of a button, what a difference it made, okay? And I don't think it's over edited. I think it actually looks really good. So there you can see the difference. So if we go here and we go to history and we just remove the edits, okay? And then we just focus on manually doing it. There's quite a few things we want to do. We want to remove the light. We want to clean up the back room of our psych wall. We want to clean up the baby's skin, right? Clean up mom. So we're just going to come over here and we go to portrait retouching. Now, whether you want to remove all the freckles or the blemishes or not, it's just a slider. So I can choose to go a little bit or I can choose to go a lot of it. Okay, so it's completely up to you how much you want retouch. So let's just say I just slide it all the way. If they do have freckles you want to keep, then obviously you would bring the freckles back. Okay, so reduce face shine. I usually kind of throw that in there. Definitely the eyes, especially when mom just had a baby. So that's super important. We can go all the way and remove them completely. Um, or we can bring just a little bit of it back. Okay, and then glass glare, lip wrinkles and flakes. We can do a little bit of that, soften the lips a little bit. She doesn't really have a double chin, but we can do that. And you can see that it's bringing more shadow in and giving her more shape. Some forehead wrinkles, we can go in there. Again, we can go all the way, or we could just go a little bit, maybe ask your client, you know, how much that they want. So you're in complete control. And that's what I love about a Voto is, you know, you're in complete control to adjust. There's her neck. We don't have an armpit. You can't see her stomach. Then we come down in here. You can do frequency separation. You can do smoothing, you know, and you just kind of keep going down. And this is one of those things that everybody is going to kind of choose, you know, what they want to do based upon their preference. All right. You can also mask it. So if you go into here in the color adjustments, you can see masking. And so I can come in here into baby and I can just pick different parts of the baby or different parts of the mom. OK, so let's come back over here to female and you can do the matte skin. I kind of like it. I think that's really pretty. You can adjust the complexion. But you can also, just if you go here, you can also tone it down a little bit. It doesn't have to be so much. Okay. And then you kind of come down. You can't see your teeth, so we'll skip along there. You can adjust the brightness of the eye. See how that gave her eye a little bit of pop. Um, you can increase the reflection. If they have glasses, your catch lights. I mean, you just can go on and on. Makeup hair so we're going to come down here to hair and you see that she's got a little bit of frizzy so we can do stray hair removal so again do you want to do all of it or let's leave a little bit so it doesn't look so perfect okay here we go a little bit of smoothing 
Okay, you could do full body reshape. So you can come down here, let's bring it out a little bit. And if you find that, okay, especially moms just have a baby, maybe they wanna kind of slim it down a little bit. Again, you can do it as much or as little as you want. Obviously, you always wanna to talk to your client first and it goes down, down, down. And so it does have a wrinkle remover. So we can come in here and you can see that it got rid of the wrinkles underneath there, which is very helpful, not all of them. Now, it does have other things like healing. You can come in here to healing, patching. So healing, it's like if we go in here and be like, ooh, we should probably work on that. That did a terrible job, but we didn't really do it right. So it's like, let's go nice and small. And we can just kind of do little bits, still a little too close. Well, let's go out and out again. We will just go in here. Let's try that and see how that does. Much better, much better. And you can go in and work all that. Now I'm working on just mom, right? Not baby, it's just using a little patch tool. So we can now go back here and let's look, work on the baby. And again, so let's go up here. Let's look at the freckles and acne. You can see the difference. You can do the same thing go all the way down. Babies don't really have dark circles every once in a while. Come down here to the skin. And you know, you're going to, after a while, figure out uh, what your, you know, what your desired look is, okay? So uh, it's a personal, it's just personal preference. It's just a personal preference. I really like for babies. I really like I really like Lemon Sky because see see what a great job Lemon Sky did on that. Um but again, you can still kind of go down and tone it down if you want, okay? Now, the backdrop. Let's look at the backdrop. We're going to go in here. I usually just kind of start clicking everything. Um, but you can see that the light is gone. You can see the background is cleaned up. You know, all of that. We can come in here, we can crop. Now, we can be done. We can nitpick this to death. Um, or we can go and add a backdrop, okay? And so one of the things I do is I work in mid-journey. Now, I've been working in AI for about two and a half years now, and I created my community, well, I've been working in AI about two years and eight or nine months. November will be three years, put it that way. But in January, two and a half years ago, I built an online community called the AI Creative Collective. In the AI Creative Collective, I have tons of different videos. If you go into members area, AI creative, I have tons of different videos on how to do composites, how to source your own images, how to do your own skies, how to uh, add to your dress, how to do flowers, overlays. In addition, I have a huge library where I have over 1,500 of my own images that I've put in this library. So these are all the things that I teach in AI Creative Collective. I source in Mid Journey. So, you know, these are some of the things that I've sourced recently and I've sourced two that I want to show you. One um, with the flowers. I, I already sized it and you want to make sure that when you're doing this you have to upscale it because when you're first getting something from Midjourney, it's going to be low res. It's going to be one meg file. So you need to upscale it. I use Topaz Photo AI to do that. The reason I do that is I batch a lot of things. So if you're just kind of doing one image at a time, you could do upscale creative. It'll take it from a one meg file to about a six meg file. If you're someone like me where you're going to source a million images at one time, I have over 10,000 images in my library, then I will work on a collection for my members and then I'll batch upscale in Topaz Photo AI. Now I've been working on a new flower collection. I'm obsessed with flowers. I just think they're gorgeous. And so um, once you kind of fine tune your flower, you can then just import it here into Avoto super quick. You can see the other things that I have. And so we can click on it and don't freak out. So that's just clicking on it, right? But now we can come in here and we can make adjustments. So we can take the opacity way down. 
okay? We can stretch it, we can bring it up or down, horizontal, which way. We can make the size bigger and bring the opacity whichever way for intensity. And it doesn't take long at all. And I got to tell you, last Christmas, Lauren from LSP, she had snow. She had um, a preset for snow on trees at a tree farm. And I remember a couple of years before I had her action and I had to apply it, flatten it, etc. Last year was a breeze because I was able to install her preset in Avoto and sink it across 100 images in a tree farm and it takes care of it so you know i i'm a big fan of lsp-actions.com if you just go to lsp-actions you can see she's got a photo presets you know photoshop lightroom she's got just a ton of different things now i am still a pretty big fan of photoshop because i do a lot of composites and i feel like i still need photoshop for the different layers a lot of people say you know, can you do layers in the foreground and background? Well, the photo's not there yet. Uh, will it be? I'm sure it will get there. But right now, when we're doing, um, oops, when we're doing composites and things like that, we need to kind of go back to Photoshop for that. But you know, I'm sure a photo will get there. But you know, this looks really good and didn't take any time at all, right? And I'd probably still tweak it a little bit more, but I'm pretty happy with it. So now if we come over here to this maternity, it's a similar thing, right? So I can just kind of come in and, you know, clean up the backdrop and I could come in here and de-wrinkle the clothing. I can go to the backdrop and do distractions removal and take away the light. I like that light nice and soft and close by. Um, I just think it looks so much better. I can kind of crop in a little bit closer. Maybe I'll go horizontal. I kind of like that a little bit better. Bring it in. Hit OK. Go over to the skin. Let's just work on that, the hair a little bit. Of course, you can do eyelashes, eyebrows, makeup. Um, you know, we can click on something so it's more dramatic in here. Um, and then we can come in here, work on her skin tone and her body blemishes and just kind of clean things up. And again, how you determine what you want to do is completely up to you. It has liquify in here. So, you know, we can come in and adjust things in here as we wish like everything else, we can make it bigger and expand the fabric a little bit. And then if I want to go into backgrounds, I have these flowers that I've used before, but I can come here and pick. So I have these flowers from Mid Journey. And what I did is this is the original sourced image, but then I went in, removed the flower right in the middle because I felt like it was too distracting, upscaled it, shaped it a little bit, and brought it in here. Now that's a uh, a vertical image so maybe if I just come back in here and let me just rotate it so we'll just rotate it just so it's um, horizontal and save it it's pretty big we need it under 10 meg so we'll just bring it down a little bit so it's under 10 meg and then come over here and then we're going to bring that backdrop in and then let's go down here. And if we do center alignment, and then let's see if we go here. And then again, just take that opacity way down. Beautiful, beautiful, good. I like it a lot. You can change your blending mode. And then, um, Obviously, you can do all of the other things. 
But what I also love is you can come in here into their color adjustments. They have all kinds of really cool color adjustments that every once in a while I'll kind of play with. I'll just kind of come here and be like, ooh, what about that one? Or hmm, that's a little too bright. But what if I go a little deeper? Mm, that's not working. Let's look at that one. Mm, I don't know. So if you're unsure, ooh, I really like that one. If you're unsure of what kind of style you're going with, you can go and play with their color adjustments. You can also do color matching, make your own looks, but then you can still adjust. I mean, you can take things down, you can increase them. You know, there's still plenty of room for adjustments. You can take your temperature down or up. You know, all of this is still within your range. You could do color, you know, color grading, curves, you know, all of that. Let's fix that temperature a little bit. Let's also try another one. Ooh, that's a little big, bright. Can go neutral. Let's go back to vivid light. Can't really decide. I love them all. Maybe. Oh, I really think that's really pretty. And then we can go back and just see what else we need to do. So this is, you know, I'm going pretty quick here, but you know, this is why I think a photo is so great. Now, I'll still go into Photoshop and do some finishing touches. I feel like, you know, for these wrinkles, I'd probably go in and do a little Gen AI, or I could do some healing in Avoto. I am definitely faster in Photoshop than I am in Avoto. I think that Avoto is only going to get better. I've been using it more and more, and I think it's only going to get better than it's already doing. So I urge you to check it out. You only pay per image. I think the cost is super minimal, um, and hopefully this helps somebody decide what it is that you want to do.